The best investing opportunities seem to come once a decade. At least that's what everybody says. And that is actually what the index shows. But do you want to know how to spot these opportunities all the time? I mean, not just once in a decade, but consistently year in and year out? Well, I'll show you exactly how to do that and give you actual proof that it happens far more than just once a decade, but actually every single year. Just make sure you like the video if you like getting the truth without the hype, because that's exactly what you're gonna get today, guys. This is not gonna be pie in the sky, everything to the moon. It's gonna be nothing like that. It is simply going to show you that it is possible to absolutely destroy the indexes and hit those once in a lifetime type opportunities almost every single year. I need to kind of set a few expectations here. When we're talking about, you know, typical market gains, you're talking what, eight, 10% or so, maybe 12% if you wanna be really, really generous in regards to those market returns. That's kind of what you should expect every single year on average in the markets there. Now, of course, you have times like 2022 that are, you know, giant crashes. You know, you have other times that are huge boom years, but nonetheless, that's pretty much the average. But what I've consistently seen over my investing career of 20 plus years now is people consistently destroying that number year in and year out, guys. We have group members that since we started the group back in 2021 have routinely hit 30, 40, 50, 60% a year in terms of gains in their portfolios. We got some folks in there actually that going back a full decade have been hitting around 50% per year in regards to their stocks. So it tells you, you can absolutely outperform the market. Now I'm not saying it's easy or anything else like that. I'm just showing you, it's not just Luke's data. I'm also seeing data from actual folks inside of our group now for over a period of basically three plus years now, we're showing that it is absolutely possible despite everything that has gone on. Now, I understand a lot of you guys have not been investing for that long. You know, you've only been investing for maybe since 2020 or so, sometime right around there, and that's okay. I can absolutely show you with actual facts, with actual data, that those times, every single one of those years was an incredible opportunity to invest. Uh, yes, I agree when you have a market crash like we had in 2009, that was just so easy to see opportunity everywhere. Of course, you can look back at hindsight now and see how great of an opportunity that absolutely was. So let's kind of prove the concept per se that you can get absolutely incredible, well outperforming the market gains every single year. Let's kind of put proof to that. And then we'll talk about the strategies for identifying and being able to absolutely take advantage of those times every single year as well. We'll do that too. Let's start right there in 2020, because that's basically where a lot of you guys started investing or started thinking about investing. That's where the vast majority of this audience right here lies in regards to investing. And guess what? We got the shutdown dip per se, right? The whole world shut down and stocks just cratered across the board. Maybe there were some stocks that were up I don't know. You couldn't tell. I can't tell you whether they were, they weren't, whatever the case is. But the point being, stocks absolutely cratered across the board. And here's some examples. You could get Tesla in the $20 range. Essentially, you're sitting on more than a 10X now, just four years later. That is just incredible. But guess what? That wasn't even the best deal at the time. Let's take a look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA could be had for just $5 per share. I understand it's split adjusted just like Tesla is, but split adjusted $5 per share. That is a 20X on your money in four years. Think about that. That is life-changing gains in a stock in just under four years based upon one event one year during that time. And guys, we could go on and on and on with this list. I'm just gonna stop it right there because there was stock after stock after stock after stock where you got a 2X, a 5X, a 3X, a 10X, whatever the case was across the board. The point being 2020 was a great year to buy stock. So let's look at 2021 next. Hype times, right? Everything to the moon and there's a lot of stuff that was the best gainers in 2021 that are just complete trash in the gutter now. They don't even exist. They're bankrupt now. That's right. So you saw a massive, massive run where people thought they were making fortunes and they weren't. It was fool's gold. It was complete trash. But guess what? There was opportunity in 2021 for long-standing gains, not short-term gains. I'm not a trader. I don't care. I care about long-term gains. And in 2021, you were given opportunities and incredible, great stocks. You could get Apple for the low 100s during 2021 when everything else was going to the moon. I know I was buying it and I was told I'm stupid, I'm crazy. Why am I not buying this penny stock with a PowerPoint and this penny stock over here that hasn't even created any revenue yet, but hey, they, they have this game changing, whatever coming, whatever the case was. The facts are you're sitting on a 2X right now during an incredible hype run where everything basically that ran up during that time frame is down now. You got a 2X move in Apple if you bought during that time. 
You could buy Microsoft in the 200s. You could buy Meta in the 200s during that time frame as well, because they all kind of fell out of favor for all the small cap trash that was kind of going to the moon at the time. So once again, there was incredible opportunity to basically double up your money in a very short period of time. Trust me, getting a double up in your money in under three years is an incredible return on investment. And that's exactly what you got during this time. And remember guys, I believe in consistently investing, not lottery investing where I'm just gonna throw money in once and see what happens. No, every single year, I believe you should be putting the maximum amount of money you can into the market. So if you're doing that every single year, those were the opportunities you had in 2020. That's the opportunities we just talked about here in 2021. And let's talk about 2022 next. So 2022, we had crazy inflation. You had the Fed raising rates at the fastest rate ever. You had a recession, even though it was kind of mild, you still had one. And you, the Great Depression was coming and all this other stuff like that, all this other doom and gloom. I saw none of those words. I saw fortune. I saw a fortune being made during that time. That's why I put more money in 2022 than I ever have in the entire history of my investing in the stock market. It was just that easy pickings, guys. So Meta is basically a 6X from that time frame. Google, Amazon, a whole lot of other stocks like that are double ups from that time. Heck, NVIDIA is a 10X from that time. Tesla is a 2X from that time. And the list of great stocks that were on a discount that have returned incredible is very, very long. The biggest losers from this time frame are the ones who didn't buy stocks because they bought into the fear narrative and all the other stuff that was going on out there. But let's talk about 2023 next. Again, the year started off with it's going to be the worst recession ever because it was just delayed in 22. Now it's coming in 2023 and on and on and on with the negative narratives. But guess what? The market actually ran. Guess what? Big tech actually ran hard and fast to where those weren't the best buys that year. Those were not where the most amount of money was gained. While big tech was busy running, other great stocks fell, in some cases cratered during 2023. I mean, look at JP Morgan. You could buy that stock in the low 100s, and now it is well over $200 for the best bank in the world you got to double up on in a boring bank stock that usually typically doesn't move a whole heck of a lot year to year to year to year, but yet you got to double up in an incredibly boring stock. And hey, if JP Morgan doesn't do it for you, Goldman Sachs was another one I was buying that was in the same exact boat. You could buy that stock in the 200s and now I think 270, 280 or so. And now it's up over $500 per share just a short while later. Again, a boring stock. And if you want to talk about boring stocks that are making incredible returns, let's look at 3M. That stock fell all the way down to the 70s during 2023. And now that stock's up over $125 per share. So that, I mean, that's basically... You're not getting quite a double up there, but we're on our way to a double up in a boring stock. I mean, the boring of the boring, which would be 3M. That's what you got. And basically just under a year in an incredible boring dividend stock. So I didn't even need some crazy tech company, some crazy this or crazy that or small cap or anything else. I got incredible returns, basically double ups in under a year on incredibly boring stocks. But let's 2023 isn't over with guys. We had some of our favorites beaten down as well. So let's look at Palantir, which you could buy in the sixes and the sevens for about half a year in 2023. And now you're sitting on almost a 5X on that stock as well. So even if you didn't want to own boring stocks and you didn't want to take advantage there, you could have absolutely taken advantage of a stock like Palantir and end up with a 5X in a very short period of time on a great stock. And we'll see how 2024 plays out. Remember, it doesn't happen during 2024. It's going to happen during the following years in regards to the buys that you make. So let's see how that plays out. But I guarantee I have this feeling it's once again going to play out exactly how the previous four years played out. So every year there was not just good gains, not great gains, but ridiculous incredible gains in some of the biggest names in the stock market, guys. And that was every single year. That is why I buy individual stocks. That's why I do it in the end. And we'll explain the exact strategy behind it here in just a second. But that is absolutely why I buy them. There was no trading in and out of stocks or selling this and going short that and going long that and all this other ridiculous option plays and everything else. There was absolutely none of that in order to get those sorts of returns. And oh, by the way, I don't know anybody during that four-year period that got the type of returns you got on just picking one of those stocks, much less all the other stocks that we discussed in regards to trading in and out and all that other crap like that. Absolutely nobody performed as well as if you just bought and held those stocks. Every year, guys, I just showed it to you. Every single year there was opportunities. So let's get into this. 
So step number one, do your due diligence and valuation. All right, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here, guys, because we talk about it all the time on this channel. I know you guys hate it. That's why I put it up here first so we can get it out of the way. You have to do your due diligence and do evaluation to even be able to see the opportunities in front of you in the first place. If you're not doing that, you're not putting in that work, you're kind of wasting your time as an investor and you're going to lose long-term. I'm sorry, those are just the facts. You guys come here for the truth without the hype. Those are the truth. That is the truth. I don't care if you learn it from me, join my group, awesome. Learn it, punch it into YouTube, Google it, whatever the case is. You gotta learn it, you gotta know how to do it. Because if you don't, you can't do step number two, which is you have to buy the fear. But you can't buy the fear if you don't understand what you own and you don't understand valuation and you don't understand the company and you don't understand the business model and you don't do all those other things that are involved in due diligence, excuse me, in the first place. If you don't do all that sort of stuff and you don't have valuation, you don't know, well, is the business really in trouble or is this just Wall Street being stupid? You can't decipher between the two, but in the end, you have to buy that fear. You have to do it. Step number three, Take what the market gives you. But it also means in the meantime, I need to be looking for those opportunities and I just have to take what the market gives me in the end. It may not be the stock that I wanna own. It's okay, I can DCA over here and pour money into this stock over here that I'm getting a significant discount on until that other stock gets to a better price and then I can switch course and come over this direction. But I don't control the market in the end in regards to how stupid they get. Wall Street does, so I have to take what they give me. Step number four, be okay being down short-term to make a fortune long-term. Look, unless you're one of those guys out there that actually believes that there's somebody out there that can time the bottom, you're going to be down in the short-term. Sure, you occasionally time the bottom, but it's pure luck, guys. I'm sorry, your buys on Palantir at $10 per share, and then it dipped down to $8, are looking mighty fine today, right? Doesn't really matter if $10 is your average whenever the stock's up over $30. Now, sure, I'm, I'm sure you'd love to have your average down at $8, but the reality is it doesn't matter because you can't time the bottom. Guess what? I hope you bought at 10, then I hope you bought at eight, then I hope you bought at seven, and I hope you bought at six, and then I hope you bought on the way up at eight again and kind of rinse and repeat all the way through. It's not about timing that bottom. It's about understanding that when I buy a stock, I'm probably going to be down in the short term because I can't time the bottom. You have to be okay with that. That is how you build long-term wealth. You always hear it all the time. Retail buys high, sells low. That's why, because we don't understand this concept and we don't apply it to our investing. We get too impatient. We don't want to wait. We buy into all the fear narratives because our stock's going down instead of adding to our stocks as they're going down. And we end up failing time in and time out. So you've got to understand step number four and be okay being down on the short term to make a fortune over the long run. And step number five, ignore the noise. Guys, it doesn't matter what's going on, what all's happening out there, you have to ignore the noise. There is nobody out there that is your friend. And as a matter of fact, as we have proven the fear narrative every single, there's a recession every single year and there has been for the past 25 years I've been investing in the stock market. But I don't think we've had 25 recessions during that time, which means they are wrong the vast majority of the time. All the political fears, all the geopolitical fears, all the wars, everything else, guess what? All that's all happened over the past 25 years. And the only losers that I know of are the people that listened to the noise and then didn't invest. Those are the only folks that I know that have lost. Oh, and by the way, they also listened to the noise on the way up. They were the ones buying Tesla at 400 because it just has to go to the moon. They were the ones buying Palantir at 40 because it just has to go to the moon and a lot of other penny stocks because they have to go to the moon and Lucid at $100 per share and all the other craziness that was out there at the time, all those folks that listened to the noise, both positive and negative, got burned in the end and they were giant losers. You have to ignore the noise. And if you need help with any of these concepts, you know, valuation, how to do due diligence, you wanna see my complete watch list with price targets, you wanna see my buy and sell alerts in real time, you wanna take five courses for free to learn all this sort of stuff, get your free coaching, and your live Q and A's with me to get further help with all this and so much more, check out the pinned comment down there. I may have left something special for some of you guys that made it this far in the video in regards to pricing for my group and see if a membership's right for you. There's so much involved. Check it out, see everything that you get. It's more than any other group out there for the price. So check it out, it'll be the pinned comment down there. And click this video here if you wanna see exactly what I'm buying in this market and click here to see my exact plan for this market. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.